Sethira, thank you very much for your time. It's taken many years to document the life story of Nkhopo uh, Zetiro. Talk to us first about why it took so long uh, to put together this moving story. Well, um, you know, uh, the whole process of putting the book together, you know, including the research and the writing, took me just uh, over um, two years. Uh, but I tried with the idea of doing this book for, you know, like a very long time. Uh, but, you know, because of my proximity to him, um, at some point I actually thought I might not be the appropriate person to do it. Uh, you know, Why? Well, because of the proximity, you know, that people might want to think that you, 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 you want to embellish the story or, you know, um, s s things like that. But um, eventually I realized that it wasn't being done, nobody's doing it, and uh, I might as well do it. And, uh, yeah, I don't think it was a bad idea at all. The, the focus on your uncle, on Hopo Zetiro, by the apartheid regime begins in 1972 when he delivers a crippling speech against the system at that time. Take us back there. What was happening, particularly in uh, universities at the time? Yeah, yeah, no, no. Well, basically, what was happening in the, in the university at the, at the time, in fact, you'd actually be surprised that, uh, you know, with some of the information that we have come across now as, you know, we're going about this research, uh, it looks like they had actually been watching him since 1969 because, you know, your intelligence reports, uh, you know, report on him from 1969, which is the year that he arrived at Teflop. But what you would recall is that, you know, from 1968 when SASO, uh, you know, was, was formed and formalized the, fo the, the following year, um, you know, there was growing radicalism, you know, amongst the uh, university students, uh, you know, with, with black consciousness, uh, philosophy, you know, spreading like wildfire on, on, on tertiary institutions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when the 29th of April 1972 arrived, when Tiro delivered that particular speech that you've just re referred to, that was basically a culmination of, you know, the political mobilization and conscientization that uh, the black consciousness movement in the form of Sasso had been doing for a couple of years here. Yeah. He, he then goes into exile. The regime follows him there and finds him and a parcel bomb is opened by him and it basically uh, tears him apart. Uh, talk to us about the moments leading up to that but also there's a moving part about his mother who goes to try and identify his remains or whatever remained of his body. Yeah, no, 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 indeed. Uh, but in fact, even before he went to exile, um, he, after he left Teflop, he went to teach uh, in Soweto at, at Morris Isaacson. Uh, but, you know, the teaching stint was very little. I mean, he taught uh, for just over uh, six months and, uh, you know, pressure was brought to bear on the authorities of the school to, to actually expel him. Um, and uh, he got wind of you know, the fact that there was a burning order that was on the way. That's when he skipped the country and went into, into, in, into exile. Mm. Um, he had not been long in exile as well when, uh, because they, he left in September 1973 and he was killed on the 1st of February 1972 uh, when he received a parcel that appeared to be from the International University Exchange Fund mm. that had been supporting them and he had been corresponding with with the, with the body, Geneva based the body um, and when he opened it um, it blew up in his face and uh, yeah, killed him in the manner that it did, yes. How, how uh, it was so horrific that uh, you, you mentioned the mother in fact that, you know, uh, my uncles and father tell me that in fact when the mother arrived they wouldn't allow her to go and see his remains at uh, Princess Marina Hospi Hospital Mutuary in, in Haborone because they did not think uh, she'll be able to you know, to stand to the side. I mean, she probably, yeah, so. It's, it's a very moving story. I congratulate you for uh, putting together this, this book. It's called The Puzzle of Death. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking us back and also giving another element of um, the struggle against apartheid. Khaungalelwe Tiro is the nephew of Onghobodze uh, Abram Tiro, a struggle hero, one of the country's struggle heroes who's really not been remembered up until now.